Well, we are still in the first wave of COVID-19 and as states open, many are dealing with a spike in cases. So what does this actually mean? NBC News science contributor Dr. Joseph Fair joins us live now from New Orleans. And Dr. Fair, hot spots are shifting south and west. Can you explain what this shift means? Well, you know, those are the states that opened up earlier, and a lot of those states had much more relaxed conditions than, say, we saw in, like, New York or, say, Washington State, for example, where the conditions were a lot more stringent and the lockdowns were a lot more stringent. So you've seen a lot of reduction in the Northeast and the Northwest, whereas, as you mentioned, there are spikes there. So there's that. There's people getting out, and we are opening back up. A lot of these places are in phase two, some of them even in phase three. And so people are, the businesses are opening up, and we expected some kind of spike there. And then lastly, I'll say people are, have, you know, had quarantine fatigue, they have coronavirus fatigue. And so they're stopping doing things that, you know, are very basic that we've been talking about for months, the social distancing, you know, even if you're going to go to a business, maintain a distance, wear a mask, just protect yourself as best you can if, if you are going to go out. And eventually we all will have to go out. Well, as you put on your virologist or epidemiologist uh, badge, what do you see coming our way? What is next in the next few months? Well, you know, initially, we, uh, when we first learned about this virus, we hoped it would follow the trend that we see with a lot of other coronavirus. And now you probably remember us talking about a, a presumed dip in the summer, just like we see with cold and flu. We have not seen that at all. In fact, we've seen just kind of a steady rise in cases, so much so that, you know, we're now at the, the greatest number of cases per day reported to the World Health Organization. So we're seeing a dramatic increase where we thought we might have some, you know, reprieve in the summer. So I think that we could see potentially a lot more deaths in the United States, seeing the trends that we are. We're certainly going to see a lot more cases. I think we'll see a lot more variety in things like Kawasaki syndromes and other things that we didn't know about before associated with COVID-19, uh, just to name a few. Well, as a doctor, certainly you have one perspective on this whole virus and the outbreak and the pandemic, but you turned the tables on yourself and you became a patient as well. You had COVID-19 <laughs> last month. So what was that experience like? Everybody's a little bit different, but more importantly, how are you feeling now? Yeah. I, I feel great now. You know, I feel fine now. I'm, I'm about five weeks out uh, from when I was uh, hospitalized. I will say that, you know, the seven days prior to going into the hospital uh, was some of the most ill I've ever been in my life. And I've had malaria, you know, three times, of course, with treatment, but still the worst I've ever felt. And then, you know, obviously not being able to breathe is a really panic inducing experience. So, you know, that, that was frightening. Uh, so uh, otherwise, I'm good. But it was a frightening experience, to say the least. Oh, my goodness. Well, we are thrilled that you are feeling good. Thank you so much for taking time to answer our questions up here in Cleveland. Uh, stay safe. Stay healthy. And no more malaria, dude. Three times is enough, Thank okay? You. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. You betcha. <laughs>